Good morning, Jay. It's a real pleasure to be talking to you again. Um, today's conversation really is about trying to find out a little bit more from you about the BTEC in design program that IIT Delhi is launching. Uh, what really interested and attracted me was that, you know, usually when you look at design degrees, it's a BTEC degree, right? And as Maker Bhavan Out Foundation, I have always felt that design, design thinking is an integral part of technology education. So do tell us a little bit more about what the program is about uh, and how is it different really from a BDES degree? Yeah, uh, so, so thanks a lot, uh, Damianti, for having this uh, conversation with, uh, with me. Uh, I personally, as uh, and also in my capacity as the BTEC in Design <clears throat> Program Coordinator of the Department of Design, IIT Delhi, mm -hmm. am very, very happy and excited, uh, uh, you know, about this program and uh, what uh, it, it brings in uh, to the uh, education in design and technology in India and the world in general. Uh, actually, so I could talk about it uh, through a presentation if sure. that is okay. Sure, so sure. I will maybe just uh, rush, run through a presentation very quickly. We did an uh, online open house a while ago and sort of this is also along those lines that we are uh, the conversation we are having. So uh, this is starting from 2025 and we have a little tagline create the change you would like to see in the world. And uh, so first of all, very quickly about IIT Delhi. Uh, of course, it's one of the preferred destinations Hmm. for our JE students uh, and the so BTEC in design program, of course, will have the selections through the JE advanced rankings, uh, but there is uh, uh, an additional design aptitude test, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, <coughs> rankings wise also IIT Delhi has been doing uh, quite well as far hmm. as the national or the international rankings are concerned. Uh, as far as our own department is concerned, uh, uh, we are uh, 13 faculty and growing. Uh, uh, we got uh, a department status uh, in 2018, although we had a master's of design in design program running from quite some time since 1994. Wow. And presently we do have a BDES, MDES and PhD programs. We also have a minor in design program for BTEC students from other departments. BTEC in design uh, program uh, that will also <clears throat> require the students to qualify for UC, which is a design aptitude test. Mm -hmm. uh, the salient features, uh, I, I, uh, you know, this is an important slide. Uh -huh. It's like this, this program is for empathetic and creative minds uh, wanting to receive a holistic education. Empathetic, meaning that they empathize with the, 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 the society, the problems in the society, and they want to do something about it. But they also want to think out of the box, you know, uh, give a fresh perspective to thinking on you know how we can bring about a change so in our program here we also stress upon understanding people well mm. also the technical systems well but also systems that is systems all work with each other you know it's not Very. an isolated part and so how do you systemically look at things we also offer a systematic process you can call it a design thinking process and there are other processes also there ai mm -hmm. in design uh, virtual reality augmented reality and so on so these are all the areas that could be interesting and our students would also get to uh, do electives from many different disciplines be it in rural tech computer science atmospheric sciences biology mechanical electrical engineering uh, values, humanities, you know, so it depends on what direction do they want to take. That It seems like a program which is designed with a very interdisciplinary approach in mind, right? Uh, where it's not a program just for the design faculty, but you expect uh, active involvement and outreach with other departments within IIT Delhi. Am I correct in that assumption? Uh, uh, yeah, Damianti, I think you are right, just because uh, I think, first of all, BTEC programs in general are broad based. 50% of the courses of any BTEC program in any IIT mm -hmm. happen at the institute level. 50% of the courses, the department has a say in them. And uh, there are also a lot of keywords that you do see. 
Hmm. So that is something I did talk about in the previous slide. But, uh, but you know, somebody can also reflect on a lot of these keywords. Hmm. But like, like I said, 50% uh, of the courses will happen at the institute level. So, uh, you know, it's broad based and every institute will add its own flavor. So in our case, of course, uh, at the institute level, the, the students do receive education in engineering, sciences, uh, humanities, uh, environmental side, uh, creative side. So that anyways happens. And 50% of the courses in general happen at the department level. Uh, so yeah, the first year will be common with all other BTEC students. That's how probably I think the IIT council has decided this. Yeah. Second year, it will be core courses in our department. So I was, I think, talking about this design thinking or prototyping or ideation methods or systems thinking or sustainability, whatever we think is the core mm. is what will be, you know, they'll get a foundation within the department in the second year. And third and fourth year, it's more about electives in the department and the institute level where the students have the flexibility to mm. actually, uh, you know, go in the direction that they're interested in. The one uh, differentiating part, which is very common in design, but may not be so in BTEC programs is uh, the emphasis on project-based learning. And as of now, these are like some of the labs uh, mm -hmm. uh, or, or the facilities uh, that are there in the department. More will come as, mm -hmm. as we grow as a department. And so makerspace, of course, is a very crucial part of our, I mean, uh, of our education, which is like learning by doing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a state-of-the-art makerspace at IIT Delhi. And as we speak, it's going to be inaugurated tomorrow by our director. This is, I think, uh, very important. But we also have other labs like user experience lab. How do you understand your users? About what, how do they think? Because we're talking about socio-technical systems. So the social side is also important. What you see as one of the infographics on the top right is, you know, some EEG-related uh, experiments going on to understand our users. Yeah, and I thought as much. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Then assist tech lab, which is like uh, uh, assistive technologies. So what you see on the bottom uh, left is basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the labs has developed a, a smart cane for visually impaired people. So these are the kind of projects that happen on the right side. You do see our students interacting with our director about the projects that they are working on at, at a prototyping space, maker space. And then there are like uh, thrust areas related labs also, be it related to sustainability, behaviors, and so on. And, and then we also have invited talks and events at our department from some of the, uh, you know, very renowned uh, experts in this area. Uh, what you see is Professor John Giro, mm. who's an expert at cognition and neurocognition of design. Then uh, mm. Professor Delfina from Royal College of Art. Uh, mm -hmm. which, and she's talking about a program at the intersection of Royal College of Art and Imperial College. Mm -hmm. So at the intersection of engineering and design. So Royal mm -hmm. College of Art is uh, the highest top mm -hmm. rank program in design. Mm -hmm. Then we, of course, have uh, Professor Amresh Chakravarti uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, uh, Cent uh, you know, de department yeah. design department at ISC, mm -hmm. uh, sharing his perspective. And then, of course, uh, we also talk about design degree show, which is uh, happens every year about, you know, the students exhibit what did they do and then you know we have the entire fraternity of the institute and the industry coming in learning and then you know uh, encouraging our students prospects point of view there are prospects in design in the industry and studios all over the world uh, of course uh, our uh, researchers uh, and students have been placed in top universities in india and abroad we we've, we've, we've listed some of them some of the top ones and so we celebrate a lot of different festivals, be it uh, Onam, hmm. be it uh, Diwali, Holi, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of festivals. And actually, there should be more that should come. Some, you know, some of them have become a part of the tradition because of various student activities and reasons. But I'm sure there'll be more uh, that we will have in the upcoming years. And I think... Uh, that's about it. And uh, I would just add... Uh, we welcome uh, the students and the parents to consider this program and in general to think about, uh, you know, BTEC in design to be uh, having this thinking uh, all over the country in many different ways. But uh, one just qualifier so that I mm -hmm. understand and the students understand well is that if you want to apply for this program, you have to clear both UC and JE, right? So again, just to clarify this so that there's no confusion, 
the students rank will be based on je advanced like any other btech program hmm. but they just need to qualify you see just to give you a context they don't have to get a rank in uc hmm. it's just this is just again a sort of what i remember roughly from about 13 to 15000 students who appear for uc every year hmm. i think about uh, one fourth to one third of them somewhere around 25 to 35 percent hmm. of them qualify uc so you hmm. just need to qualify uc and then but your ranking will be based on j on j understood <laughs> yes. so this distinction <laughs> is important to be made clear to students because yes, yes, you yes. can archive this and this can become a reference point that you've made this clear my next question now that you have explained the program at length is you know you also mentioned that what kind of careers i mean you know ultimately your btech or your choice of where you want to go right um, depends uh, a lot on the students of uh, when they are making that choice when they've got their je rank and they want to go uh and choose their discipline right and uh, i also know that the parents also have a big say right in which institution they go to what program they uh, want to uh, uh, choose i think it gets lost a lot of times both from the student side as well as from the industry and corporate side you know it needs to be stated that design uh, sits at the center of any system based approach solution so so thanks a lot uh, damanti for this question uh, uh, and i think this is a very important question and, and a discussion interaction debates that we need to have uh, you know uh, to to be able to you know figure out that uh, you know how do we approach uh the future with uh, the kind of uh, engineering education that the country should have there are many perspectives we can look at uh, you know some of the top universities of the world how are they approaching it we can look at our new education policy we can also look at uh, some of the premier institutions of the country how they are envisaging it and uh, i mean one thing uh, if we do want to uh, talk about uh, is that uh, you know there are certain strengths that engineering education has had in the past and there have been certain strengths that design education has had in the past right um so that is important you know we we're not questioning that many of them it's like uh, you know electrical engineering mechanical engineering computer science uh civil engineering humanities uh design has also been there so i think all this also has been there right so mm. it's not like this is not important but at the same time we also need to uh make our students ready you can call it for the industry or for the future what is it that the world holds where they can contribute take a lot of assumptions and you get, you you can come up with very precise solutions to that kind of engineering so that mm. is one approach here we are taking it from the the the, the opposite extreme we are like forget how you will solve this problem i mean meaning instead of get being very precise with electrical or civil or mechanical we will get you started from the other direction that is okay how do you understand how do you approach a real world yeah. problem oh. and you understand when you look at a very uh, uh, complex problem then it's very interwoven very systemic you know you change oh. one thing then something else happens and so you want to look at so many things together and once you look at these things together then now we are saying okay you've reached a point and we give them very quick methods that how do you do some rule of thumb prototyping or electronics or this or that of course we we are in no way saying that uh, you know the people in ai or electrical will do a far greater justice but then our students who want to solve real world problems sometimes they need a little bit of electronics little bit of mechanical little bit of materials little bit of this little bit of that so we get them started so that they can think of in a you know bigger picture think in a le very leader way uh, leadership manner and then approach okay now how do we need to go where we need to go and then they can choose and decide where do they want to go with their career where do you see the uh, maker space movement right uh, growing in the 
near future, right? What direction do you see it growing? And, you know, one additional question that I want to tag in it is, you know, makerspace movements have always been about open network collaboration, right? Uh, so, you know, within academic makerspaces, you know, what are your preferred sort of directions. You talked about Indore, you talked about Bombay. I also think there is a need for greater collaboration. And I said shared conversations uh, so that we can form a collective vision of how we want to uh, create an ecosystem within the country, which supports each other for ultimately better social uh, outcomes, right? Uh, so over to you for your thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Daminti. And uh, I would share uh, my perspective is what I'll say. And, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, this is not the only perspective. And that's what the, the beauty of the openness of uh, maybe this maker movement also is that many perspectives are respected. And uh, so, I mean, one is uh, what does this maker movement Entail, you know, one is it it helps uh, a student uh, to to be able to make things. That's where I think uh, you know, sort of uh, the etymologically, you know, this is this is what it means to to begin with. You mm. know, the students get very fascinated when they they make things or they have the freedom to decide what is it they want to do. Mm. It may not again so much be about making x y or z but it's like you have the freedom you've been given training now you decide what you want to do okay. and so that brings in the joy and mm -hmm. so the joy comes through making but then the interest in intrinsic feature is that uh, you know the freedom part also the, the agency side. the agency right so so that is also something that uh, this this maker movement brings about taking up some challenges in the real world and doing something about it mm -hmm. so that is also a direction that the maker space could take you know, of course, anyways, the students uh, that do projects, be it uh, related to Maker Bhavan Foundation, or mm -hmm. there is the GYTI, Gandhi Young Technological Innovation Awards. Mm -hmm. And and there are, uh, we also did a boot camp called mm -hmm. Change Makers. So it's mm -hmm. like they are saying, is it making or change making or both? Yeah. So then when you think of change making, then it's like a broader perspective context. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with people and then how do you bring about a change? So it could be that. But then one more thing that I just want to add, which I just alluded to, that sometimes when you think about bringing a change, it may be systemic, right? That may be a part of it. But sometimes, you know, it may so happen that the change may come through behaviors, more so behaviors than a product. Recently, uh, you know, there is one of the most popular courses at MIT hmm. is a course taught by Professor Neil Garshenfeld. Uh, mm -hmm. I was a postdoc at MIT, so I probably I'm talking about MIT. There may be courses in other parts of the world also. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the course is how to make almost anything. It's one of the most popular courses where the students uh, yeah. get the freedom yeah, to make, about this. Yeah. make whatever they want. And so based on this course, I think uh, I think they have started an organization called Fab Academy. Probably it's it's similar to like Maker Bhavan Foundation. What Fab Academy does is in the spring semester for six months, they teach this course to the rest of the world. Okay. And then they also conduct a conference hmm. in which they have a challenge in different parts of the country where the, actually the convocation happens. Hmm. So there they, they go, everybody, so like one, one year they went to Bali, one year to Bhutan. In fact, I, I did go to Bhutan and then one year they went to Mexico. They're looking at the local context and locals and the experts are working together to figure out now how do they solve a problem in the local context. Mm -hmm. So they are already doing something like this. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, there are many different dimensions and perspectives uh, uh, possible. So I'll stop here. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure this has opened up uh, an opportunity to continue the questions in a subsequent session. So consider this like a first of many such conversations that you would have with the foundation in the future.